Man ir tas svarīgais uzdevums uzrunāt um, mūsu šodien šajā te īpašajā dienā. Mēs vinam draudzes so, dzimšanas today, dienu. Today we are un, celebrating man, our man, liekam, uh, church's jāsā, birthday. And I have to start with a short story, which is quite already known. It's a joke. It's about a child who went to the Sunday school and returned home and tells his father, I have a question. And father, of course, knows all the answers to questions. And the child says, today I was in a Sunday school and I was told about uh, the Israel children. And they went through the Egypt and through the sea. And then children of Israel went through the desert and fought their enemies. And the father is saying, yeah, you got to know so much. But the child is saying, while the children of Israel were doing all the things, what were adults doing at this time? So this morning, I must say, what we are celebrating, it's not that somebody else did it. It's you who did it. You have done it. We are already together for 31 years. It's your history. It's your deeds and works. And this is what you have done by God's mandate and led by God. So I am happy to see you present here. I am happy for those who have connected to us online and their friends. We think of you very seriously and we believe that God also perceives you very seriously, even though you are not physically here. And special greetings to those who have connected to us in Cēsis, in Rēzek, in Liepāja and all those who have connected to our service from other countries in the world. So we love you from all our hearts and we also celebrate your history and your achievements. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. In the Bible, there is a verse which uh, today is uh, very, fit, uh, very fit to start with today. So this is Psalm 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then he continues, he forgives you all your iniquities, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from destruction, and so on. But from this verse, we can understand that God doesn't want us to start every morning from scratch. He wants us to look back into the past and make conclusions and uh, count on them in the future. And today, my dear friends, I would like us to stop and emphasize what's the most important, what God has done among us during uh, those 31 years which we have behind us. And you know, possibly, if you ask me what is the largest miracle God can do in your ministry, and if you asked me this uh, 30 years ago or 31 years ago, when I became a pastor, um, I was 29 then, my wife Liga was 25, in our team there was also one adult, Walters, he was 5 years old and we considered him as an adult in comparison with the rest of the team because Kitty was 3 years old and David was only five months old. And this is how we started. And possibly, if you asked me at that time, what is the greatest uh, work God can do, then I think I would agree to the person who, who is um, maybe passing this address for all these 30 years. So at first he sees a fence rising up and then some activities and then some signs. Those of you who remember, there was uh, this fence of blanks uh, and um, it was written that this uh, belongs to the church pre And so this person sees all these dynamics, how it's uh, 
uh, being transformed, transformed and modernized. And if, if we met this person this time today and asked what is the greatest uh, works of God he has done in this church, and he would have answered that this is the house, the building and the property. And you know, uh, to, to, to say that this is not a miracle, this modern house and this complex of modern buildings where there are more than 10,000 square meters, so many classrooms and, and so many uh, modern, comfortable, convenient, aesthetic uh, rooms, to say that it's not a miracle. And besides that, we also have another five uh, plots of land, which uh, each of them came as a miracle, and we own them. And to say that that's not a miracle, that would be um, not so good. It would be like uh, not recognizing what God has done. But as a pastor who meets um, people and uh, is communicating with God, I would say this is not the greatest miracle. This miracle is a miracle, of course, but this is just a accompanying sign for a greater miracle, what God was doing. And that miracle started already long before I became a pastor. In uh, 1985, at that time, it was the Baptist Church, uh, Riga Calvary Baptist Church, and the pastor was uh, Mr. Arne Seals. And in his memories, uh, he, remem uh, he writes that irrespectively of the management of the church, God had started uh, the work in uh, the hearts of people. He had poured out the thirst, thirst uh, for God. And then he was writing, and I didn't uh, put, put hurdles, I didn't, I didn't try to stop it. And at that time, that was uh, actually heroic, and uh, it uh, cost quite a lot to this pastor. And I met those people in whose hearts God had poured out the thirst. And uh, one of them was a young uh, uh, girl, 13 years old, who after the service spoke to the other uh, young people and said, let's go and pray. After the choir practice, let's go and pray. And uh, after each meeting, she said, let's go and pray. And I was 17 years old at that time. I was a young man who went to the gym and I was thinking a lot about myself. Sometimes I had a feeling that my chest is uh, so strong, it's um, um, all hormones were playing. Uh, and, and when this girl came to others and said, let's go and pray to God, I, I felt it's quite uh, nice. And I said, yeah, let's go and pray. And at that time, I'm praying uh, wasn't uh, anything special. It, it wasn't something pleasant or something fitted for young people. It uh, seemed something uh, for wimps and, uh, and, 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 and senseless, but meaningless. But Liga was all the time invited, people inviting people to go and pray. Those prayers were not uh, somehow grounded in something, in some teaching, but it was just shouting to the, to the heavens, God, we are not satisfied. It was um, this uh, holy dissatisfaction with what happens in our country, in our church, and what happens with our friends and relatives and families. And that was a prayer, God, please help us to understand and to save people. And what's interesting that, that this thirst, um, God had poured out thirst and they were increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. And increasing. And at that time, I didn't know the scripture, um, even though in that uh, little room where there was a choir practice usually held, there was a small poster with John 7.38, uh, where it is said that he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And I was thinking, what kind of streams? Uh, and somebody was saying, this is a song, and, or this is a 
uh, feeling of duty. Uh, but this was adequate to the situation. But I didn't know that in verse 37 it's written that um, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. It was said by Jesus. And then comes verse 38. He who believes in me uh, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So uh, these young people, these uh, people who are praying, they're qualified for this verse because they, they were calling unto the heavens, God, please save, save, save. And, and we had quite a few young people at the time and uh, we uh, refurbished um, a uh, little room in a cellar and that was a place for our uh, our uh, having time together and uh, most of us uh, were not uh, married of course and, uh, and, 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 and we were uh, being there together and we thought it's going to be great but we didn't expect that this place would become a place of prayer and uh, after the service uh, young people disappeared there in the cellar and they were not uh, playing disco or something but they were praying to God God please save people please reveal to us and that was done uh, hour by hour by hour and, and sometimes uh, young people even didn't manage to come to the service they managed only to those prayers sometimes they came at 9, 10 or 11 o'clock and there was a story that uh, young people came at 11 o'clock and they knock uh, at the door of the cellar they come in and, and they say I have an interesting feeling those who are passing they, um, they uh, look um, back and they don't understand what's going on because in the cellar the, there are weird things coming out uh, but we were laughing because we knew we were crying unto God we were shouting out we were shouting out our thirst and our uh, shout of faith so that God you are alive God and it can't be that this is all that we are having and when we are, were asked to leave the Baptist Church we were a church uh, wandering around in Riga. We didn't have a place where we were able to cry to God. And then some people from our group who worked uh, in some suitable uh, places, we were looking for suitable places where you can hide and, and really cry to God and, sh and, and do it from our heart. And one of the brothers uh, was working in a pumping station not far away uh, from here, and there was uh, this was a pumping station of Riga, and uh, all the waste water came together and uh, compressors were uh, um, taking the waters uh, to Daugavu or to the, to the sea as at uh, those times it happened. So, and there was a big underground room with uh, very powerful uh, pumps uh, uh, in there. And, and the brother said, um, it, nobody is uh, against that you gather together over there and uh, you can cry and you can pray, nobody will hear you. And Olita and Sister Lilith, uh, she was one of those who were praying there, League was there and I was there. And possibly my sister was, uh, Ilza was there. And Sylvie was there. And um, her, um, daughter-in-law Sanita is also here and also her uh, granddaughters are ministering and also participating in church work. And we came together and we were looking for uh, various places. I will not count them all, uh, all but uh, we were really thirsty. And besides those prayer things, we also had two another things which uh, people were thirsting for. And one of them was that people wanted to understand the Bible. They wanted to understand what the Bible was saying. When in 1993 we returned back from Uppsala, from the Bible school, School, we straight away started the Bible school and it has continued uh, throughout all these 31 years. And as soon as we graduated the Bible school, we were like young and, and green. <laughs> and we straight away started uh, also Bible school here. And uh, this uh, people's thirst to understand the Bible was so, so great that they came even from other towns. Uh, they moved to Riga for three months to be able to participate in the Bible school. And uh, I was thinking that we are 
Gressel and uh, and Hans, uh, like, uh, if we talk about experience, but we came with such an authority and anointment and courage and we were teaching people and people were learning and there were so, so many uh, great hours spent studying the Word of God. And I believe that uh, thousands and thousands of uh, Latvian people have gone through this and they were blessed and uh, they are still blessed through this training. And then there, there was another thing which characterized people at those times and uh, it also testifies about the work of God He's doing in people's hearts. God spoke to us and we also uh, were involved in the ministry. In the morning service, I was speaking about Eddie's, and I was telling how he was carrying uh, tons and tons of equipment, uh, carrying around, but now they are here, put, uh, and, and everything is working, but at that time, it wasn't like that. We needed, uh, for the every service, we needed to put up, um, to uh, bring something up, and afterwards uh, uh, take it uh, down. And so uh, somebody might say, this is uh, interesting humane how can you request something from people but but our guys uh, Edis and Martin and Iman speakers and Jan six those were the um, legionaries uh, who were always there and uh, as they had to carry so much they uh, created a, like a train uh, in front of you put one um, speaker and then uh, um, others and then they were laughing and, uh, and this way going to the second and third floor uh, of uh, that uh, cultural house so uh, and they were doing it three four times a week and guys were doing this with excitement wow and God had placed it into their hearts and also Jansson family uh, just now uh, there was your daughter here Paula and you know Inga started uh, and Anders Anders now is an uh, entrepreneur but he has done everything what was needed he was dancing uh, reading poetry singing uh, he was with his flags and um, Inga also through all throughout all these years she is a professional teacher she has worked with children I, I can also speak about my Brusbard who as a young mathematics teacher started uh, working with children and then and, and it expanded expanded and expanded and also I can speak about Christine and Jan Christine came as a model beautiful with shining eyes a young girl and everything the church was doing Christine and Jan were always organized Organizing everything from A to Z, sports activities and everything. And we knew everything is going to be great. Christine and Jan will take it. Um, today, her daughter, Jaina, was ministering here. And her son is uh, one of the uh, drums players. I could uh, call him from one end to another. Here are people who answer to this call from God. But my dear friends, what is so special in this? Uh, that people gave up their lives. They placed them on the altar and these lives uh, were consumed by God. They took something away from them and put on the altar of the Lord and it went up to the heaven and, and they were not paid for it. If somebody had calculated how much uh, we should have paid to them, you know, we would be um, several million in uh, minuses still. But I am sure that it will be paid to them. In Hebrews uh, chapter 6, verse uh, 10, um, it's written that God is not uh, unjust uh, so that he would forget what you have done, uh, that uh, you have ministered to the saints and you ministered. And what is so special that uh, people respond to God? You know? God speaks so gently in such a nice way, so um, slowly. And if he hit you, if he threatened you and put uh, um, thunder and lightning, uh, then and would say either you die or you minister. 
and then it wouldn't be a wonder if people ministered. But he is doing it so gently, and people said, yes, I will do it, I want it, please help me. It's like in Isaiah chapter 6, uh, in front uh, of God there is a high priest, Isaiah, and there is nobody else, and still uh, he is saying, who am, I, who am I going to send? And Isaiah is saying, send me. Here I am. I will go. And in Romans 6, Apostle Paul said, Don't you know that you surrender yourself as servants and you have to obey Him? And so he is saying, if you obey God, it will change you. It will transform you. He will place uh, pain and longings in your heart which you didn't know before. And God did it. And the waters have gone. We can we cannot return back in those, in those times 31 year, uh, years ago. This is already invested in the heavenly bank, which is uh, special for God. And God is not unjust uh, to forget it. He will never forget it. If you take from his uh, hands his precious burden and, and carry it. And today God is uh, also gently and slowly speaking to you. And we have a possibility to respond to him. Today we are standing here at the new door which has to open and talking about the past, thanks God it uh, didn't start with uh, me or you, the anointing uh, started from the first revival and uh, me personally when I was 13 I chose uh, this uh, church of Calvary because there were prayers and this was a special church and they had this uh, spirit, they were searching for God and you could have felt it when you entered the church. But today is our time, our lives, which we surrender to God. And we are in a very, very interesting place. Jesus said, to whom a lot was given, a lot will be asked. And we know that we are given a lot uh, to church. Uh, a lot has been interested and the Lord expects a lot from us. And I believe that here there is nobody who couldn't say that I know what I need to do. God specifically has told me something. And then he spoke to me and said this and that. I promised to him and he revealed to me especially. And if I did it, if I uh, put more effort, if I trusted him and if I was more perseverant or if I stopped doing something or if I also attracted help and, and do what I already know, there would be a breakthrough changes. We are in a very special and interesting place that we know a lot. We know what? But it seems that we don't want to get to know how, with what and when. There are a lot of uh, opportunities and maybe the last moment for them was already yesterday. And we also know that God's answer to our prayers and requests, God's calling, we know that it involves and will involve ourselves. The answer to this prayer will be us. And this position, literally, I was uh, feeling in uh, Friday prayers, uh, I had a vision that you and me, we as a church, physically, were standing on the seashore. And somewhere there, far away, similar to Moses, when he had to lead uh, the Israel nation uh, out of the slavery of Egypt uh, into the Promised Land, behind him there was the army of the enemy. And the same today, we can hear their breathing and sound of their weapons. And there is no big choice. Either you die 
Padoties un mir. Give up and die. Vai atkāpties un pēc kāda mirkļa or... iet bojā. Put, uh, go uh, away and Vai die in a moment or do something or take up this rod to start using the word of God and promises he has given in the Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ to go against the current to be in that almighty ship that uh, we can see here the front of it, which is uh, facing challenges, facing tiredness and habits and not willingness, uh, disobedience. And if I was standing in this place alone or you were there alone, then we could uh, maybe find uh, some type of solution, a temporary solution to hide somewhere and to somehow deal with the situation. But we know that behind us there are people, there is a nation, a nation behind us, and we need to help them. They need uh, us to help them to enter the promised land. Therefore, we are standing in this complicated place, and this is a breaking point. And on the one hand, it scares and annoys, but on the other hand, it is so releasing. There is no choice. We know that we have, that we are able, and that we also want. Hallelujah. To do something, to change, to respond, to open the new doors. And it is similar like standing on uh, the verge of the abyss. You want to jump. For the for hundred times you've been uh, learning how to swim and you have uh, looked at others doing that. And you want to jump no from the high place. And for ten times you have avoided that and you have always found excuses and why not, why not me, why not like that. But now you're standing there and you know that you want to do it and you will do it. You want to go further. You want to move forward. And the Lord has sent, said, raise up. And we have done it. And we know that God is saying, go against the enemy. And this is a specific um, direction. And how is it uh, to leave something behind and move forward? Let's see how one girl from our church leave and decided for the first time to enjoy the free fall. I will show it for, the, for two times so we can get used to this feeling. <laughs> When um, you are praying for somebody for the first time, when you are leading in a prayer for the first time, somebody who accepts Jesus as the Lord, when uh, it's the first time when you lay your hands on those who are sick or you stand against the devil in your family, when, you, when it's the first time when you decide that I want to, to receive my healing because Jesus you know that promises work. You know that everything is fulfilled. You know that God himself uh, is awake uh, for about his word, so to fulfill it. But you also need you and me in, in, in that. And when comes fear and not willingness and uh, hundreds of reasons are saying, give up, you won't succeed, you already tried. What else do you expect from me? I am already so busy. God, what else do you want from me? 
And then Jesus is saying, my food is to do works of the one who has sent me. And food is something that gives uh, strength and energy. Those who don't, don't eat, they die. And Jesus gives an answer. Start doing the work of God. Start living. Start enjoying this fantastic adrenaline that you live in faith, that you live in obedience. Because only when you decide to obey, and I want to say with capital letters, uh, when you decide to trust your coach, and when you start uh, acting, then the reasons and excuses, why not, well, um, which um, had, um, were holding your legs so strong, they lose control over you and you start flying. And by doing this, uh, joy fills your heart and more and more you understand how much you are created to be flying. But this happens only when, for the first time, or for real, or again, you put a very specific time in your busy daily life. You set a time when you pray to God, that you read the word of God, and you eat the bread God is sending to you for your life, for your daily life. And it happens only when you, together with your spouse, you agree that just for a little, but every day you'll join hands and pray together, worship God together and bless our children. And it happens only when you say, I have a room and I open the doors of my room and my apartment to let in people to share uh, the bread I already have so much. And when you go out with your family or small group in your streets uh, to pray for your neighbors, then we start hearing the heart of God. And when we stop um, at uh, somebody and the Holy Spirit says, speak to him, uh, care for him, call him. And when we are doing this, when we get away from this uh, safe uh, foundation, from this uh, cemented zone of comfort, then I lose this control over my life and I start entrusting my life to my father's safe and wonderful hands. And while you are standing at the seashore and just looking, just look at the waves and the sea. The sea will stand against you strong as uh, the rock. And therefore the Lord is saying, lift up your rod. Start doing, start using the power you are given. Start moving forward. This is a time for you to rise up. We are standing between the sea and the camp of the enemy, and there is no big choice. And it is so great to be aware that we are not jumping alone, that it's somebody who is for us and in us and with us, and his name is the miracle, uh, his name is um, the almighty God, advisor and uh, eternal father and also the king of peace. So turn all the weight of your life from your control into the Father's hands. Let's trust Him. And let us look how she was jumping in reality and we will see that she was doing it together with her husband. Oh. 
so great. Such a freedom. We have left something behind. And for all of us, there is the past. Some good things, but some bad things. And uh, those bad things tend to carry on, we can carry them with us. Some um, disappointment or unforgiving somebody. Something wants to still come with me and, uh, and be with me. But with yesterday's experience, I cannot get the future. I have to leave it. I am a new creation. And what was uh, has passed and everything is now new. Uh, so the new wine is poured in new vessels. Hallelujah. 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 And if you are standing, so let us pass, let us go to meet our Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I know that I'm talking to the church which is filled with the heroes of faith. And even if you have joined us recently, you were born in a God's family and uh, in, in some sense you have been rooted in this church. And if, even if you are recently just come to God, you have the same roots, the same pioneers anointing to be the light and to change the public to impact uh, the situation. And I must say that in our church today, the same role we had uh, 30 years ago, still we have it and we have to be pioneers here in Latvia. For us it is important for ourselves, but we also need to show to other churches and encourage other churches and Christians that the revival is possible and that we believe it and we have surrendered us our, our lives to see it. It is very common comfortable to find a very comfortable coach and uh, remain there sitting. Even if you are feeling that God is calling you or, or some uh, other uh, people to act in faith, to start something new, to do something that uh, you haven't practiced for some time, it is so easy to remain sitting uh, on the coach. I am also speaking to Cesis, Liepai, Rezek and to all of you who are watching us in Latvia and also outside of Latvia. I am speaking to you who are sitting here. Christians very often use this saying which sounds very spiritual and they are saying I will not uh, do anything before God personally tells me. Sometimes uh, they say I am not going if God is not going. This sounds so spiritual but on the other hand can't it be so that God is saying hey I am already doing come and join me. I am already working. I am already in act action. So don't stay. Don't uh, just sit in your coach. Uh, come and join your hands uh, to what I am already doing. You can imagine about uh, some young people who together with friends are going to some great place, Pavelost or Ventspils, for example, to see how surfing is done and maybe also to try out themselves. And so those friends are going and catching the waves and enjoying time and learning a lot. But this person uh, remains sitting because, of course, it's not going to be easy in the beginning. You need to put an effort uh, if you are doing something for the first time. If you haven't done it, it's not so easy. But you can learn how to do it and you can uh, experience uh, this life and catch the wave only if you are uh, prepared to leave the old things go. Uh, positive or negative experience in the past, you put it aside and say, God, please send me. Send me. I am prepared to do what everything you will tell me because I have uh, given up my life for you. Not only to come to the church service uh, once a week or to connect online, but to give my whole life away to you. Everything that I have, uh, what I am able to give for your kingdom, to, to spread it here on the earth. In Acts 2, verse 17, apostles are quoting 
quoting uh, the prophet from the Joel from the Old Testament. Uh, he was speaking thousand uh, years before about the time in which we live. Uh, you can say to your neighbor, we are already living in this time. Also, those who are watching online, please write in the comments that I am already living in these days. So it's uh, said here, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out uh, of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. We are living in these times. Uh, God has poured and He poured uh, His Holy Spirit already 2,000 years ago and He has take, hasn't taken it back. The Holy Spirit is uh, still among us. So we are filled with the Holy Spirit and God from the beginning wants to fill us up so that we get refreshment for our spiritual man and we are awakened in our calling and act in faith. But what do we see in this uh, scripture about uh, what God God is uh, speaking uh, together with his prophets already in the Old Testament. He's saying that all of them are one. There is no difference uh, whether you are a Jew or a, a Gentile or somebody from other nation in Latvia or you watch uh, us in a different town or city or country. It doesn't matter. God is pouring the Spirit over all, all the flesh. And the sign accompanying sign that the Spirit is poured uh, over flesh is that we start acting in the supernatural. And I'm saying we have done it, we have experienced it, uh, already enjoyed it. But maybe on the one hand, um, for example, during the war or there is a competition and you have won a competition and there is a time to celebrate and to relax and to enjoy this victory. And now God is saying that again, you need to go and conquer new lands and to win the new competition. And this is a fight for uh, the souls of our contemporaries and also for fulfilled lives for ourselves. So what is he saying? He is speaking about uh, various age groups. He is saying that each one of them uh, has uh, a special role and task. So while you are still alive, God has a calling for you. And there is something supernatural, something strong. God's calling over your lives that you have to do now. And before you're dead, you have a calling from God. You have something to do. You have to still do something. Something. The seasons change, responsibilities and tasks change, but there is still something you have to do, and uh, I am speaking to you. He is saying that sons and daughters shall prophesy, so it means they will speak a divinely uh, inspired words. Uh, they would proclaim some events, especially the ones which are related to the kingdom of God. And young men and young women will see visions and dreams. I don't know, but during the last years I am uh, more and more been praying uh, for people and uh, when I go to sleep I see visions and then I go to play volleyball I see something because God is uh, awakening those spiritual gifts and this is a way how he wants to reveal the future for us and also old men and women old men and women listen to me they shall dream dreams and see visions in those dreams. Why is God giving dreams? Because the dreams have to be fulfilled. Among us, um, in the public, there are people who are dreaming uh, great things and telling that uh, they will become great people but are not doing anything. But in the church, it shouldn't be like that. God is giving us dreams and visions. And so it means that we have to be thirsty in front of, uh, in presence of God and say, please, God, what can I do from my side? So that uh, not... Uh, not our pastors, but God's dreams uh, are fulfilled and visions. And you know, they will be fulfilled. 
and you can either jump in on this ship, jump on this wave and do it together with us or remain as a viewer. But I don't recommend it. It's uh, great to be a observer, but uh, better to experience yourself. We want uh, to uh, people for people to around us experience Jesus uh, through us. When Moses uh, was preparing the Israel nation uh, to go to the promised uh, land, he chose 12 representatives who were the most experienced leaders in that public from each of the tribes. Ten of them came and brought back uh, fear because uh, in their hearts the word uh, God had spoken hadn't joined with uh, faith. Therefore, they were talking from the human point of view. Uh, they were saying, yeah, they are so great, uh, so high walls, uh, it's impossible. And when we also look at the uh, things uh, God has planned for our time in Lepa and Zez and so on, it seems that it's not impossible. And only two of them returned uh, with uh, message of faith. And later when Joshua wanted uh, to send the uh, people in the promised land, he sent only two and all those were young men, young ladies, who obviously, there were some who were talking about dreams of God and those went out to uh, see how does this land look like and how to do it, uh, what God was talking to us already time ago. Today I would like all of us together to follow this uh, mission and vision and pray to God, please open our minds and eyes to be able to dream again. Maybe we have negative experience, maybe we were hurt and disappointed and didn't succeed in something. And maybe we have stopped dreaming, but God says, again, I want uh, this uh, sign of the Holy Spirit, uh, and not only speaking in tongues, but also visions and dreams. Uh, this is also a sign. And in our, uh, with uh, pastor and with uh, leaders, we've been dreaming what God wants to do, how he wants to guide us and everything we have spoken about we could um, summarize together in a very simple word and you will think that this is a uh, name is Jesus but uh, this word is uh, revival say revival write in a comment revival I believe in revival revival say revival uh, like if you believed Revival. Let's get used to this word. Revival. Spiritual awakening. This is what we need for our public, for our church, for everyone else personally. That is needed for Europe and also for the world. We need a revival. This is not just uh, something we are expecting God when, when will something happen. No, God has placed this uh, pain in our hearts and uh, desire to experience it. We are ready to act. We are ready to sacrifice our lives on the altar of God. To be able to see what He is able to do to through such mortal and incomplete people like us. He can do great things. He can do great things. And he will. He will. What is a revival? We can speak about uh, divine responsibility and part. Uh, maybe this is a global movement which uh, happens in large crowds, but it starts from yourself. A global revival or for all, all the countries starts here with us, with the church breakfast. Uh, in other churches, uh, let God help them to raise up and to go forward. But now I'm speaking to breakfast. And I'm saying this starts with us. Revival starts with us. A revival is a new beginning uh, in obedience to the Lord. When we say, Lord, I make choice to obey you, to hear your voice, to listen to your voice and obey you. And one of the visions I saw about the church is that we are on the way. You all have also traveled and gone to the city, larger or smaller city and um, on a highway which is not... Uh, with uh, lighting, uh, you uh, travel and then you are coming close to the city and you see very, very strong light. The church is the one which shines and who receives the glory is Jesus because he is raising and building his church. We cannot uh, do anything by ourselves, of course. But this is God's mercy which is uh, operating through us. And then when you come closer to the city, uh, to the place uh, where the light comes from, you start noticing that this is not just one big uh, source of light. 
No, quite the opposite. All this bright light is formed by uh, several small lights. Somebody has uh, lit the light in their living room or, or bedroom and they are praying during the night. Maybe somebody is traveling through the city with the car with lighting. Maybe there is a street lighting or, or also cafe working. And then there are billboards which are uh, uh, shining and all this together formed a big light and all this uh, is the vision of the church, uh, how we expect to be and will be. And God lits up uh, all of us, young and old, uh, teenagers and uh, children. We are on fire in our calling. We are up and we start uh, working. Uh, all of us have talents and things God has placed into our hearts and we just need to let it go. Uh, God will speak to us through dreams, prophetic words, uh, through his word when we will be in a prayer. Like uh, with a hammer on the nail, we have to be witnesses in this world. There is nothing to think about it. Uh, it with the means, you are able to do it, but all of us have to shine. So just, just very short about the revival. There are three things we see for the new season, which we are entering as a church. So first is revival in you, revival in me, say revival in me. Because um, large, great revivals start with specific people who are saying, God, I am obeying you, I will follow you. So what does it mean? Personally experience the revival, to wake up personally in relationship with God and with your calling. So make choice to follow Jesus, uh, whatever the cost. When you say, God, I have really surrendered my life to you. You are my Lord and I will obey you. I will surrender to you. I will live for you. I have decided to follow like it said, I have decided uh, to follow Jesus, no turning back. In the same way, we have to surrender ourselves and we are renewing more God's moral sense, standards of holiness, uh, not here, but also in whole public. If it's written in the Bible, I will do everything uh, led by God's grace, not to live in sin and to live a holy life uh, pleasant to God so that I can see how he honors sin and shines in my life. We prioritize the word of God and prayers in our daily life because if he is the most important, nothing can uh, replace it. Uh, maybe we don't do this as Daniel three times a day, but uh, we can do it at least once a day to have a date with our Savior and Lord, to read the Word of God and also pray. Church, we are um, carried out by preaching the Gospel and also destroying works of the devil in this world. We love the Church and become part of it. We are involved, each of us, and we learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. We are not afraid to make mistakes. Uh, we are afraid to stagnate and not act. How would it look like? Let's dream. How this personal revival would look like? I'm thinking about some fathers who before work, uh, before wake up their children and take them to school or uh, the kindergarten, they get up earlier to read the Bible and to pray and stand in uh, God's presence for, he, for what he has done so that he can be a priest in the place. I'm also thinking about mothers who are not giving up on their children, about students who don't get involved uh, in, in a relationship which is just flirting or sinful things, but they choose to stand for divine standards and also call others for it. I'm thinking about teenagers who are ready to delete some applications which um, hinder them uh, to live a good life. People who give up on alcohol and porn and decide to do whatever possible to live a holy life. Uh, I am also speaking about men and women who start conversations uh, with people and pray for others in uh, unsuitable situations. But if the Holy Spirit is guiding us, we cannot uh, just uh, remain without acting. And when we experience this personal revival, which we already see, because uh, we are speaking those things as visions for the future, and we have to expand, we have to strengthen ourselves, and uh, it is also happening already. 
say it is happening. So the next step is revival in church. Uh, when we are awakened, uh, when we are on revival personally, then we wake up others and the fire is already on. The fire is already on. But how does the revival in church look like? How does it look like in our church? It means that only some of us are just observers. Everybody finds a way how to be involved practically to serve others. So this is Sunday school, this is technical um, things. Um, people who work with design, people who help us uh, to do testimonies, successful business people who come and clean our bathrooms. Everybody can find their own way how to serve and how to participate and how to be involved and uh, join their hand. I believe for new ministries which have to start, uh, ministries with addicted, uh, with people who are in debt, uh, to young parents and uh, teenagers, when um, God places in your heart, you do it. Also for teenagers, for young people, uh, for old people, a uh, grandmother can uh, teach girls uh, how to do some practical works with knitting or sewing and also disciple them, uh, also entrepreneurs who say, where is the next project, where is the next uh, thing in the kingdom, next uh, mission thing, we need uh, resources uh, so that we can believe for expansion in our business so that all these kingdom things can advance. And all this leads to the revival in um, Riga, Liepāja, Cēs, uh, not only in the, in the city, but in the whole country that all of us, each of us is shining and wherever we go, we bring the kingdom of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit is guiding us. We heard uh, testimonies uh, this uh, Saturday from our leaders who were telling how the Holy Spirit is uh, operating through them in their small groups and what is God doing in your life? Let, us, uh, let it uh, flow freely. Let the Holy Spirit guide us and let the Holy Spirit connect uh, the things which are in our hearts so that it also works in our lives and I believe that God is raising up leaders in the church, uh, smaller or bigger, but uh, we are here to impact and to lead and to be the light. And not only in our uh, city we are talking, uh, I'm talking about also the whole country. I believe that God is giving us a new passion for Latvia, for the cities in Latvia, for uh, villages and towns where God wants to build a church and uh, create those branches of Pliakovets, uh, people who will reach out to other people and will save uh, whole uh, towns and villages. I believe for many places where you are already there, uh, those of you who say what God is doing in Riga, I also want to see in my town. And uh, so that we connect together uh, people whose uh, hearts are burning. Uh, also maybe here are somebody who is uh, thinking that uh, my responsibility will be my suburb or my working place. I want to see the revival and changes. That's going to happen. In Acts, God is saying, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. And you will not be ordinary people who live ordinary lives. You will live supernatural lives. Your young men and sons and daughters uh, shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. God is um, waking it up and God is giving us uh, power and authority to be the light, to be leaders who are changing and uh, impacting things in the public where we are. We are the head and not the tail. We are the light and the darkness is going away when we enter the light. We are not going with our physical muscles. We go with divine love and with patience and uh, slowness. We go with uh, the the weapons of the spirit. We walk with God's love and we are fighting against the spiritual enemies and they cannot uh, stand against us. They are defeated. They have no choice to stand against us because uh, church is the power God has uh, lifted up and the gates of hell cannot stand against it. So wherever we see the hell and also the darkness, uh, we uh, cast it away. Uh, you say, I am casting it away. And we are victorious. We are the leaders. We are the light. We are the leaders in this time. 